Good evening, this is John Milburn for Laws 11057. Introduction to Law, this is week two of Term 2, 2017. Tonight I speak to you to camera. Our open session was one where we were discussing issues to do with technology and uh, the first assessment. So the purpose of tonight's discussion with you to camera is to talk about some of the things that you need to be aware of as a lawyer and the content is primarily from The New Lawyer by James and Field. So you'll see firstly that the layout of the text is in three distinct sections. There's part one which deals with knowing the law, part two which deals with doing and applying the law, and part three which deals with being, which is being a lawyer. You'll see that there are a number of threshold learning outcomes that you need to achieve and master in pursuing law studies. There are issues to do with knowledge, ethics and professional responsibility, thinking skills, research skills, communication, collaboration, and self-management. Now, the interesting thing about that list of threshold learning outcomes is that knowledge is only one of six. So when we discuss learning the law during this course and this subject in particular, I'll be emphasizing many things other than simply your ability to know the law. It's one of six components. And that may surprise you, given that you've probably entered into this course expecting that it will all, it will all be about imparting knowledge of the law to you. Certainly my experience in when I studied in the 70s and 80s, early 80s, was that it was all about knowing the law. There was very little um, about ethics and professional responsibility. There was very little about thinking skills, research skills, communication, collaboration, self-management. Essentially, I knew a lot, but I didn't know how to apply it and I didn't know how to do it in the context of real life. I promised you in week one that I'm tailoring this course to those of you that wish to practice in law. So knowing the law is one thing, but all those other things are just as important. Lawyers are a very proud group. It's a profession. And as a profession, historically, it was self-regulated. Now over time, that has come to change and lawyers are now regulated by external bodies um, in, in the same way that many other organisations and professions are regulated. It's also fair to say that lawyers work in a very broad range of environments. Um, from my perspective, I've had the advantage of working in different fields, different areas of practice over extended periods of time. And um, part of that is because I enjoy the process of um, identifying new areas of practice and uh, trying to understand what it's like to, to practice in that field. So there are considerable advantages in having that broad approach, but just as equally, there are considerable advantages in having specialist skills. So most lawyers will tend to work in a very special uh, area. I, I just, I resisted that, um, but I would certainly encourage you to think about specialisation at some stage. Sometimes people come from outside the law and uh, particularly those of you doing uh, study through CQU may fall into that category. So if you were working as part of the Queensland Police Service or perhaps the Australian Tax Office or a different profession completely such as engineering and you come to law, then understandably you may wish to apply your legal skills in that specialist area that you're already familiar with. And of course, you might be able to charge a premium for your services because of that specialist knowledge. So the reality of legal practice is that lawyers are there to help people. I guess that makes sense. We also to give clear advice about complicated problems. On Moodle this week, or so more particularly you crew this week, I explained something using two styles. The first is the old fashioned style, the way in which 
lawyers have traditionally spoken. Very long-winded, long sentences, convoluted ideas, terrible archaic words such as herein before, and altogether somewhat uncomprehensible language. But now, as a new lawyer, your role is to give clear advice, and to do that, you need to provide that advice in as simple and as clear a manner as possible. That means avoiding legalese and avoiding technical language. Increasingly, lawyers are just as much negotiators as they are advocates. And um, mediation is an area that has risen considerably in the last 30 years. So mediation skills are now very important and I uh, have the privilege of teaching ADR as part of um, the second year electives. Lawyers certainly read a lot. So I'd commend for you reading page 10 of the new lawyer, which deals with the attributes of a lawyer. What do you need to possess to be a good lawyer? The list is very accurate. Clarity of thought, good communication skills, even better listening skills, often overlooked. Well-organised, technologically capable, committed, personable, flexible, understanding, tolerant of people, and having a good ability to analyse and problem skill and problem solve. So that's what we need as a lawyer. So you need to be able to listen and communicate and be well organised. So let's think about that in a practical sense. All of this is examinable. Um, the advantage that you've got is that when it comes to being well organised, you might have your own systems that work well for you, even though they may not work for others. If they work for you, that's a, that's a good thing. But we tend to find that with well-organised people, there are some common traits. And the thing that I mentioned last week is think about working backwards. Think about what it is you want to achieve and have in place the steps that will allow you to achieve that with the minimum of stress. It's really important that you have those systems in place so that when you're under pressure, you can rely on those systems to work for you and ensure that you do the best job you can at that time. It doesn't matter what area of practice you work in, um, the basic skills will be the same. Now in Queensland, legal practitioners in practice, um, as such with a practicing certificate will either be solicitors or barristers. Most, perhaps 90% or so, are solicitors. We don't have what's called a merged profession, um, as, as is the case in other states, um, other than Queensland and, and I think New South Wales. So in Queensland, you're either a solicitor or a barrister, you can't be both. But of course, there are other ways that you can use your law degree and you can cross over. So, I mean, for example, I'm a private lawyer. I, I work for the government in terms of being a tribunal member academic um, at CQU and, um, uh, and some involvement with the community, um, having established a community legal centre or co-established the community legal centre. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Now, during the course, you'll hear about the Priestly 11 and they're the 11 courses that are, um, if you like, core subjects. Administrative law, civil procedure, company law, constitutional law, contract law, criminal law, equity and trusts, evidence, professional conduct, pro property law and torts law. So they're the key subjects, but there are some very important subjects that don't form part of the Priestly 11. I've mentioned alternative dispute resolution. I think you can add to that family law and um, I do environmental law as well. So there are a range of other subjects that arguably are just as important, even though they don't form part of the Priestly 11. We've talked about your professional identity last week. We said that that begins early. And part of the first assessment is for you to review a case which deals with your professional identity and some of the things that you may face if you intend to seek admission as a lawyer. So read those 
um, that case carefully. Have a look at the Australian Solicitor's Conduct Rules. Have a look at the Barrister's Rule. And you'll get an idea of the ethical obligations imposed on lawyers in practice. So that's a brief introduction to what it is to be a lawyer and the attributes that you need to have at your disposal to be a good lawyer. Now, coming back to the issue of knowledge, there are some fundamental legal concepts that you need to be aware of. Law in Australia, Queensland, is primarily statute law or common law. Statute law, that is law created by Parliament, and common law, which is judge-made law, which is based on the doctrine of precedent. Many years ago, it was judge-made law that was far more important, far more um, direct in terms of um, how the law operated. These days, it's the reverse, and parliamentary-made law is the most common area of practice or a common source of our law, and it's supplemented rather than the common law. There are still, still some areas where it's common law based, but primarily in your subjects that you, you learn about, you'll be talking about and learning about statute law. Um, there are some important statutes and the distinction, of course, between the Commonwealth statutes and the state law. In essence, in simple terms, statute law overrides common law. So the laws passed by Parliament override any laws that have been made through precedent by the, um, the courts. And when I say laws made by the courts, I make that comment in a very broad sense. Law, courts don't have the ability to pass legislation. They can't make laws as such. However, where a court makes a decision, it may have a binding effect on lower courts faced with the same or similar circumstances. So in that sense, because it does have the ability to bind courts, higher courts have this law-making ability, which we call common law. So where do you go to find the law? Well, on Moodle, I've provided some information about accessing legislation and case law. At a Commonwealth level, Com Law, State level, the Office of the Parliamentary Council of Queensland. Now, they're the authorised sources. They provide up-to-date legislation at both the Commonwealth and State level, respectively. There's excellent information online as to how to use those services, how to, le to read legislation, uh, some good commentary about what lawmakers need to know, how they go about their work and the process of um, bills becoming introduced and then ultimately legislation. So do have a look at those authorised websites, which are for the Commonwealth, Comlaw, and the Queensland, which is the Office of the Parliamentary Council. There are other services that are excellent, and um, one is AUSTLI, A-U-S-T-L-I-I, which is um, an acronym short for the Australian Legal Information Institute. Ostley is part of a worldwide organisation and you'll see counterparts in, say, Britain and other places. It's unauthorised, but it's still very popular and it's very good. It provides you with one place to look for Commonwealth and state legislation, regulations and case law. And do have a look at Law Site, um, which is a search facility, and have a look at Note Up Search. And you can see where, from legislation, you can see references to case law. And um, from the case law, in reverse, you can see where, um, uh, through law site, where a particular case is cited in other cases across a range of jurisdictions. So note up and law site are very good functions in Ostley. Another excellent um, uh, program or, or platform is Barnett Jade. Barnett Jade is unauthorised, but it's very popular. It does incorporate uh, authorised reports search guide, and you can obtain daily updates through subscription. Now, I urge you to look at this and actually subscribe. Select areas of interest to you, and each morning you'll get a, uh, an email with 
the case law relevant to that area of interest. Could you imagine how good you'll feel if you take the trouble now to subscribe to Barnett and you find that on the day before an examination, you receive note of a High Court decision which is directly on topic and you can cite in your examination something that was passed down by the High Court three days ago. That'd be brilliant. Don't forget court's websites have some great information as well. So that gives you an idea just in very broad terms of how you go about knowing the law, where you need to look. When you look at the law, remember of course that it's essentially British law which has been incorporated into Australia. Please don't forget Indigenous Australians and the, the role in which um, customary law is still um, considered as um, described in the new lawyer. Um, think about Mabo and the Queensland, the Native Title Act, which was uh, introduced at Commonwealth level the year after Mabo, and then have a look at the Wick people, um, which is a case where the court decided that the grant of a pastoral lease did not necessarily extinguish native title. So there are a few things that you can consider there as well. Read with interest and care the issues to do with terra nullius and uh, the fact that Australia uh, was regarded through common law and legislation of the United Kingdom as on unoccupied land. I don't know how they came to that conclusion, but that's what they did. And it was only as a result of Mabo in 1992, where the High Court considered the claim brought by Eddie Mabo on behalf of the Merriam people who had occupied continuously uh, the Murray Islands in the Torres Strait, where there was a resolution of the uncertainty. The islanders were successful and uh, the Queensland government um, uh, had to, to deal with the issue, as did the federal government. Um, and that led to the Native Title Act at a federal level, and I'd ask you to look at that and read the um, commentary in your textbook about that. So um, when it comes to understanding the law, remember, of course, that the law as we see it now was introduced and made and is still subject to that um, general regime. One thing you will find is that the term common law is used in two different ways. I've already alluded to one tonight, and that is that I've contrasted common law to statute law, common law being judge-made law. But historically, common law goes back even further and can be contrasted to a thing called equity. I won't get too much bogged down in this, but be aware that there is and you will read about the contrast between the common law and equity. And it kind of worked a bit like this. Back in medieval England, the courts, which were common law courts, applied the law very rigidly. It was black letter, and um, there were limited remedies available to a court, essentially damages for something where there was a wrong. But because the common law courts were so inflexible and they were so limited in what remedies they could give, the Lord Chancellor established essentially his own court. And the brief given to the Lord Chancellor's court, which is chancery, was make your decision based on equity and good conscience. You know, what's the fair thing to do? Don't worry too much about the black letter law. And the Lord Chancellor started to make a note of its own decisions. And, and as a result of that, the doctrine of precedent was born in that the later courts would look to earlier decisions to make decisions that were consistent with what had been decided in the past, which is really precedent. Anyway, eventually, and for hundreds of years, you had two parallel but separate court systems operating side by side in England. Common law, black letter law, equity, what's fair in the circumstances. And it was only in 1893, sorry, 1873, 
with the passing of the Judicator Act um, that the, um, there was a merger. But even now, you'll still see reference to equitable principles, equitable remedies, as opposed to common law remedies and common law principles. It still, it still applies. Even, and some courts have the power, and certain tribunals have the power to make equitable remedies and decisions and others don't. So it will always be something that you need to consider. Now, let's make that a bit more concrete. What do I mean by equitable principle? So an equitable principle is where um, essentially is a doctrine which explains something which applies in equity. I'll give you some examples and they're in, in the textbook as well. So one who comes into equity must come with clean hands. In other words, the purpose of, of that saying is to say that the court's integrity must be protected and preserved. So the court of equity will disapprove of illegal acts and it may deny relief for those people whose conduct was essentially illegal. The public policy is that if you're doing something illegal, don't come to court to seek a remedy because things went bad in that illegal transaction because as a matter of public policy, we're not encouraging people to be involved in illegal activities. So that's something that you might consider. Another is equity looks at the intent rather than the form. And this really shows the difference between the old black letter common law, which was very rigid, very inflexible, as opposed to equity, which looks at what was intended by this particular transaction. Um, we see this a lot in terms of, say, time limits. Um, it may say in the contract that settlement has to occur in a land transaction by a certain day. Equity would allow flexibility on the date for conclusion. So to make it clear, you'll often see, for example, in that instance, a notation that um, uh, time is of the essence of the contract which means that the parties have made a conscious decision in their agreement to stick with the black letter law in terms of the date and not allow that flexibility of equity to settle within a reasonable time. So think about those issues and how it might work in practice. Okay, in your text, the authors go on to talk about the characteristics of the Australian legal system the rule of law, liberal democracy, common law legal systems, constitutional monarchies, federation, separation of powers, and responsible governments. So have a look at those issues as well, and uh, you'll see those characteristics defined in chapter four, as I recall, of your textbook. Okay, so what are we trying to achieve here in Introduction to Law? We're trying to build your professional identity. We're trying to give you an opportunity to learn technology and apply it in a real sense, to build some teamwork, develop some collaboration skills, certainly have um, an understanding of the importance of attention to detail, learn how to source and then importantly apply the law, and make sure that you have a good work ethic so from the start, we're looking for you to build an ability to prioritise your work and meet deadlines. Thank you for listening for, to me this evening. All the best, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.